everyone and welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing okay i do have my dressing gown wrapped around the bottom half of me because my house is freezing so just letting you know that today i'm going to be talking about my top 10 albums that came out in the 60s and i'm so excited for this video because i've spent the last few months delving into different albums that came out in the 60s ones that i haven't heard before and ones that i have heard before but i haven't given them like a deep dive and i've managed to create a top 10 list obviously i haven't listened to every single album that came out in the 60s and there's plenty that i haven't heard but out of the ones that i have heard these are my top 10. as always i would love you guys to comment down below your top 10 albums that came out in the 60s or any albums that you think i should listen to i love expanding my musical horizons and chatting with you guys i found loads of different albums from you guys in the comments so thank you so much for that also please don't hate me because these are just my picks and i'm just a music lover i'm not an expert and obviously i wasn't born in the 60s or anywhere near i was born in 1996 so i'm very much looking retrospectively at these albums so here it is a list that literally no one asked for by a girl in her early 20s talking about music as if this hasn't already been done a million times before so first off i thought i'd start with my absolute favorite album that was released in the 60s and what i personally think is the most important it's a really obvious pick but you can't have a conversation about music in the 60s without talking about the beatles so you guessed it it is sergeant pepper's lonely hearts club band by the beatles I love this album so much so 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 much i've loved it since i was a little girl just because i enjoyed the songs but as i got older and i kind of learned more about how influential and how really important this album was in the 60s i just loved it even more it's potentially my favorite beatles album potentially it definitely has some of my favorite beatles songs on it getting better is just a gorgeous song fixing a hole she's leaving home lucy in the sky with diamonds obviously and it is home to my favorite favorite beatles song of all time number one with a bullet this never changes being for the benefit of mr kite overall great album great concept shits all over pet sounds in my humble opinion i should probably mention that pet sounds is not going to be on this list but yeah, the Beatles are the best band in the world. That's not up for debate on this channel. <laughs> I'm currently reading Mark Blake's Pigs Might Fly, which is a book about the history of Pink Floyd. And um, spoiler alert, I'm loving it. But there is a part in the book where Nick Mason talks about how everything changed in the music industry after the Beatles released Sgt. Pepper and how bands like Pink Floyd were able to make the music they made because of Sgt. Pepper. So yeah, it, it just had to be on this list really. Next up is another album I absolutely adore by a band I adore and I think are actually a little bit underrated. I'm not sure. I might be completely wrong, but I never see this album on people's lists. But it's The Kinks Are The Village Green Preservation Society by The Kinks. So I read that this album was a commercial failure at the time, which is strange, but it seems to be getting more recognition like in the later years, which is nice. I love Ray's lyrics. He has a real knack for storytelling and it comes across so well on this album. I'm definitely a fan of the other Kinks albums that were released in the 60s. My second favourite after Village Green would probably be the Kink Controversy. Why can't I say that word? But I just think this one has something really special about it. It's very English, which I love. The songs are really catchy with great choruses and great melodies. And I just think it's a real like feel good kind of summer album. It just puts me in a really great mood when I listen to it. And my favorite songs are the title track, picture book, phenomenal cat and sitting by the riverside so yeah fantastic album the kinks are the village green preservation society next up is an album by one of my favorite bands in the whole world pink floyd and i'm going to talk about a saucer full of secrets i know the obvious choice here would be the piper at the gates of dawn which is another album i love but for me I've just always had a soft spot for and preferred a saucer full of secrets. I spoke about why a little bit more in the Pink Floyd album's worst the best video that I did, but it is really just a personal thing for me. I love the songs on this album, especially Set the Controls for the Heart of the Sun. That is just one of my favourite songs ever. I just think it's amazing. The drums are just 
fantastic in that song. I also love the song Let There Be More Light. It's a great opening track and it has a really cool like pace to it. And these really like dreamy kind of whimsical vocals and a Beatles reference about halfway through the song as well. But honestly, I love all the songs on this album and that is why it has made it into my top 10. Okay, so moving on to a magnificent debut album from a magnificent band. It is In the Court of the Crimson King by King Crimson. From start to finish, I think this is a truly perfect album. It's so well thought out and has so many different sounds and different ideas performed by some seriously talented musicians. The opening track, 21st Century Schizoid Man, is obviously like a complete classic and one of my favourite King Crimson songs. But I would have to say that my favourite song on this album is the closing track in the court of the crimson king it's a really like haunting whimsical kind of song and just so nice to listen to i love the album cover as well it gives you like a good idea of what you're going to hear from the album and greg lake's vocals are just gorgeous i mean this is just a really solid prog album it was one of the first prog albums that i ever properly properly listened to apart from pink floyd i know there's debate as to whether pink floyd are prog or not but that's a conversation for a different video but in the court of the crimson king is just a classic a great prog rock album and overall just a great album so my fifth pick these are in no particular order by the way but this is up there as probably next to sergeant pepper as my favorite i guess from these top 10 i had to include this band because not only are they an amazing band but they're from my hometown you might have guessed it it's the moody blues with their 1969 album to our children's children's children this album has no business like being <laughs> as good as it is every song is just top tier for me and the way they all just flow together so nicely is just like my favorite thing in the world and honestly i feel like this album hasn't aged a day like for me it feels like it could have been released in like the last decade not over 50 years ago which is just insane vocals are gorgeous the harmonies are amazing moody blues do harmonies very well in my opinion it's so dreamy again and the lyrics and the melodies get a big emotion from me which is always a sign of a great album songs like floating i never thought i'd live to be a hundred sun is still shining eternity road out and in are all like for me like these feel good kind of songs they make me really happy when i listen to them but then songs like eyes of a child part one candle of life and watching and waiting like make me tear up a little bit but i mean all i can say is that every song is incredible it's a beautiful album and one i would recommend to anyone that hasn't listened to any moody blues before or even if you have and you haven't listened to this album i mean i'm sure lots of you have if you're watching this video if you haven't then i would definitely recommend going and listening to this one from start to finish and my top three songs are out and in eternity road and sun is still shining next up is another phenomenal debut album released in 1966 this is the mothers of invention with freak out this is an interesting one because unlike all of the other ones that i've mentioned so far I didn't love this the first time I heard it. It took me like a good few listens to get my head around it, which I think is a good thing because now I can just appreciate it a lot more. Freak Out was just so ahead of its time. Frank Zappa is a true genius and the fact that this is a debut album is just crazy to me. There are so many different styles and genres that are being explored and every song brings something to the album but my top three would have to be i ain't got no heart trouble every day and anyway the wind blows i just think like as someone who's 24 looking back on this album it just seems like so cool and boundary breaking and i kind of wish there was someone making music like this now because it's experimental and fun and authentic and just one of the reasons why i love 60s music so much even though i wasn't born yet I know I keep mentioning that. I mean, it's, I think it's obvious that I wasn't born in the 60s, I hope. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Freak Out is just a weird one. It's fun, it's different. Sometimes it's weird and that's okay. 
So my seventh pick is another kind of feel good album for me. This one makes me really happy and gives me like summer vibes again. And it is Astral Weeks by Van Morrison. This isn't my favorite Van Morrison album. If anyone cares, my favorite Van Morrison album is Common One. But Astral Weeks is still a completely solid album and so different to what was being done at the time. Of course, the vocals are gorgeous and so passionate and intense. And the songs really stick with you after you finish listening to them. They can be a little bit cheesy at times but i think it really works i love how the musical arrangements aren't massively overcomplicated. it kind of makes the vocals like the main event There's lots of acoustic guitar which i love and it just really reminds me of like summer and like being camping with my family and like driving with the windows down that is so cheesy but it does all the songs kind of like bleed into each other especially in the first half of the album but not in a bad way and my favorite song is probably the way young lovers do but every song is great and that is why astral weeks is one of the most important albums of the 60s for me my eighth pick is an absolute classic and probably a bit of an obvious pick but i think it's really stood the test of time and it is tommy by the who the who are such a great band and this is probably my favorite album by them i also love um who's next but i'm a sucker for a concept album and i think this concept is executed really well it does such a good job at taking you on a journey and telling a story but also with really catchy and technically good songs my personal favorite songs even though i think it's hard to kind of choose specific favorite songs on concept albums like this but if i had to choose my top three would be christmas the Acid Queen and Pinball Wizard. And I also love the closing track, We're Not Gonna Take It, a lot as well. I mean, there's not really a lot I can say about Tommy. Like, I'm a sucker for a concept album and this is an absolute classic. So next up is a new addition to my list. I haven't been listening to this one as long as I have some of the others, but it managed to worm its way in here anyway, which is a testament to how much I like it, I guess. And it is the debut album Crosby, Stills and Nash by Crosby, Stills and Nash. This album was released just a bit before Crosby, Stills and Nash became Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young for the first time. I'm not usually into like folk rock or like country rock kind of thing. It's just not usually my vibe. But I think the songs on this album are just undeniably good. Again, a little bit cheesy lyrics at times, but that's not always a bad thing. I think the vocal harmonies and the vocal styles are just beautiful, so it really makes the album for me. It's very easy to listen to, very accessible and very acoustic-y, with some really catchy choruses. My top three songs are the opening track, Judy Blue Eyes, Pre-Road Downs and Long Time Gone, but I also love Marrakesh Express, obviously. And the opening guitar section in Wooden Ships is just beautiful. I mean, overall, this album very quickly became one of my favorites. And I just think, again, it's a timeless classic, hasn't aged a day for me. So before I talk about my final pick, I thought I would give some honorable mentions Albums that I love but haven't quite made it in to my top 10 because there were so many to choose from. So first of all, literally every Beatles album, but mostly Revolver, The White Album and Abbey Road. I love you guys. Um, Are You Experienced by Jimi Hendrix was almost on here. That's a classic. Bob Dylan, Blonde on Blonde nearly made it on here as well. Led Zeppelin 2 nearly made it on here. Okay, so my final pick, I really wasn't sure what album to choose by this group because they released some absolute killer albums in the 60s. I decided to go with Parsley, Sage, Rosemary and Time by Simon and Garfunkel. For me, this is just my favorite out of the Simon and Garfunkel albums that were released in the 60s, which was basically all of their albums. I don't even know why, but this album, I've just always really connected with it for some reason i love the vibe it's very dreamy and relaxing that seems to be a recurring theme that i'm talking about in this video i think it's got no filler i love every single song on there but my top three are homeward bound for emily wherever i may find her and flowers never bend with the rainfall great voices great harmonies great songs great album
So there you go, my top 10 albums from the 1960s. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments if you agree with my choices or if you think I have no idea what I'm talking about, that's fine too. So I'm gonna be making this a series. Next up, obviously I'm doing the 70s, which I'm finding a lot harder than the 60s actually. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Please give the video a thumbs up and I will see you guys very soon for another video.